Hello and welcome to today's lecture where we talk about loaders that are extensively used in construction projects to handle and transport bulk materials. So today we'll learn about what loaders are used for, what factors will impact their production, and how to use the information that are given by the manufacturers which are, which are most of the time provided in tables, how to use that information to find the production of the machine in every hour. Okay, so let's, with that introduction, let's get started and let's learn more about loaders. So they are versatile pieces of equipment. One limitation with a loader uh, would be that it cannot work for underground surfaces. This is uh, dissimilar or, you know, despite, I mean, a shovel can do this. This is not similar to a shovel that can, or a backhoe or a hoe that can work in, um, you know, surfaces that are under the natural ground surface. So a loader can only work in the surfaces that are above the ground level, okay? They are uh, mostly used for non-cohesive materials because the amount of pressure they can exert on the ground is, uh, you know, less than, I mean, the penetration force they can exert on the ground is less than a shovel or a hoe. So, so far we know two limitations, that they are less powerful than a shovel or a hoe. And also the second thing is that um, they cannot work in underground levels. But anyway, they are extensively used in construction work to handle and transport bulk materials. All right. So there are different types of buckets for a loader, okay? The first one being a general purpose or one piece bucket. And uh, it's a heavy duty, all welded steel. Uh, obviously the cutting edge is the, the edge that depreciates faster than any other parts of the bucket. So it needs to be replaceable uh, and it is so there are no teeth it's just a straight lip edge okay so there are no teeth here but for multi-purpose uh, they are also heavy duty uh, all welded steel sometimes they are called four in one because they can do four different operations being digging uh, blading, climbing, and grappling. So all of them uh, could be done using a multi-purpose uh, bucket. So the buckets have bolted on replaceable cutting edges and bolt-on type replaceable teeth uh, sometimes could be attached to them and obviously they are I mean, you could move them, you could attach and detach them and replace them with new pieces. Third type would be a rock type. As you can see, the teeth are not in, are not aligned, are not in a straight line. Uh, so it is still one piece. It is a heavy duty construction, but it have a protruding V-shaped cutting edge. So. It's, it looks like a V here, okay? Uh, the reason is for prying up and loosening shot rocks, okay? So these V-shaped teeth are the reason they are called rock buckets. You also have side dumps, uh, which are good when you need to use your loader, you know, in traffic, along the road in traffic. Uh, they are also good when you have to work in confined areas where accessibility is an issue. Um, they are obviously, they come in two different types of left hand and right hand dumping buckets, okay? And they can work from the side. Uh, 
and uh, the bucket could sometimes be replaced with a forklift uh, obviously to uh, you know to transport or to haul boxes or uh, other pieces of equipment depending on the loader's capacity and the weight of what it is going to carry so look at this video changing the bucket is very easy thanks to you know the advancements in these machines the operator doesn't even have to get off the machine or it doesn't need two operators a single operator can detach can drop it one bucket as you can see it can easily pick up the next bucket so obviously if you have a variety of buckets uh, you could do your job uh, I mean more smoothly because each bucket has its own uh, capabilities and it's not a good idea to use a single bucket for all the operations and taking good care of the buckets also goes a long way in you know increasing their service life so you see the operator detached the second bucket and now it is going to for the third bucket obviously skillful operator yeah so this is a forklift and yeah it's pretty sturdy pretty strong and it doesn't even need an operator to attach I mean an operator who should stand close to this to attach it or detach it manually and as you can see the work uh, the forklift could be used to carry other buckets around all right so in this chapter for finding the production we need to use a few tables uh, if you uh, need the tables they are provide all of them are provided in this slide and uh, one of them is talking about the fill factor means what percentage of the bucket can be filled that depends on the type of materials and that also uh, depends on you know the size of the aggregates so we have the uh, we have the you know speed for different uh, you know different specifications actually for a uh, specific loader fixed cycle times are also given based on loader size we have uh, you know a range of uh, cycle time uh, which ranges between 27 to 42 seconds for a single cycle. Uh, for wheel loaders, we have these specifications like what is their speed when they're going forward, when they're going reverse, and representative specifications for a track loader. So we have it for a wheel loader and also for a track loader and effective haul distance on production. Uh, so it tells you uh, for based on you know uh, the, based on uh, the based on the this factors okay that are given to you which is the haul distance okay it could be 25 it could be 50 then uh, the haul time could be could change accordingly the return time could change accordingly and obviously the cycle time could change all right so production rates uh, for a wheel loader uh, we have fixed cycle time for loading maneuvering and uh, for dumping okay so that is fixed um, yeah so what is not fixed what can change the thing that can change is the travel time from the loading to dumping position and of course returning time from the dumping position to the original position and the volume of materials could also be different so 
we have one exercise that could, uh, you know, that can teach you how to find the production uh, of a loader. The size of the bucket is the first thing you should look at. Here it is four cubic yard. Step two is uh, to find the bucket fill factor. For that, you would need to use table 9.6. Two pieces of information are uh, needed here. What type of material and what size of the aggregates we have. Uh, we have processed aggregates. So when it is processed, it is uniformed. Okay. And the maximum size is more than an inch. So we would use this row. Is it a wheel track, a wheel loader or a track loader? The answer is it is a wheel loader. So we will be using this and it ranges between 85 to 90% of field factor. Okay, so we need to check the tipping. Load weight is four cubic yard and it is 85% of it could be filled. Okay, so uh, 3.4, which is the load weight should be multiplied by the loose unit weight of material. So that would be the, the answer. And so from table 9.8, we need to, we can find the, uh, we can find, yes, uh, the weight of a static tipping load in full turn. Okay, static tipping load in full turn is 25,000 pounds. So the operating load we consider a 50% or half of the tipping at full turn. Okay, so the operating load is half of the full load, which was 25,000. So once again, how did we find 25,000? We just looked at uh, the size of the bucket, which was four cubic yard. Okay, and we also looked at, so uh, we, we looked at the static tipping load, okay, uh, to find the corresponding, uh, to find the corresponding uh, load, okay, and then 50% of that would be the operating load, okay, so uh, we just, this is just to check that if the bucket can does this operation for us, uh, we here, uh, we just uh, found the number is 10,000 something. It is less than 12,500 operating load. Therefore, we're good to go. The loader will have the enough capacity to do the job. Okay, so this is a check. This part does not interfere with your equation. Okay, this is just, uh, you know, a check. So typical fixed cycle time could be found using table 9.10 that depends on the loader size. In our case, it is uh, between, it is four cubic yard bucket, so it would fall into the second row. And we're working with a, a wheel loader, not a track loader. So uh, where these two intersect, the answer would be between anywhere between 30 to 33 seconds would be our cycle time. Okay, so. Uh, so I, if I give this problem in exams, I would tell you an optimistic or pessimistic. If not, I would advise you to go with the average uh, in the range to just be, you know, uh, on the safe side. Um, well, actually, if you want to be on the safe side, you would choose the larger number. Okay, you would go optimistically. It won't take any time, any longer than 33 seconds. And the efficiency factor is 50 over 60 because it is given here. So 10 minutes is being wasted or not efficient. In an hour, class of material is aggregate. So uh, this will be, you know, it is uh, 3,100 3, pound per cubic yard, per loose cubic yard. So now you have everything you need to put, to insert in the equation. 3,600 is a constant. Four cubic yard is the volume of the bucket, out of which 85% could be filled. 
The cycle time, one cycle time would take anywhere between 30 to 33. Well, we just uh, wanted to be optimistic. So we just put the 30 seconds, the shorter time, and efficiency is 50 over 60. And if you want to convert it per uh, ton per hour, okay, because it is, it, it is what the problem is asking for in tons, per hour, okay? So you should divide it by 2,000 because there's 2,000 pounds in a ton and this is LB, uh, the typo here. So the answer would be 527 tons per hour is the amount of load uh, this loader can excavate and then can process, can handle. I mean, excavating, swinging, dumping, coming back. Well, there's not a lot of swinging here it's just moving uh, the whole process. Um, I mean, the, the entire amount of dirt that can be moved in an hour based on the bucket size, the material, type of material, and the efficiency, and the size of the bucket, yeah, uh, which I mentioned earlier, all of that together would uh, create a productivity of or production of 527 tons per hour. So that includes my lecture about loaders. I see you all next time.